let's see how we can create a sample Kubernetes backed stack uh, using Cloud 66 from code all the way to production uh, in about 20 minutes. Um, I'm going to start with a single service application. Um, it's a simple web server written in Go. Um, I'm going to call it Pilot. And um, here you can see four products in my Cloud66 account that I can use. Um, Rails and Node are specific to Rails and Node frameworks. And today we're going to we're going to, we're going to focus on um, Skycap and Maestro. So Skycap is a container native CI CD pipeline that can build my code into Docker images. You can think of it as a as a pipeline that takes in my code from a Git repository and then runs my Docker build um, in a workflow. It can be a cascade of different ones, uh, or it could produce more than one image based on single uh, code repository, and then it stores it in a private um, Docker repository that I have access to. So this all comes in a package called Skycap. And Maestro is a full application deployment management platform. It's uh, The container part is managed by and backed by Kubernetes, but it does a lot more in terms of firewall and security, ACL access control, deployment workflow management, uh, native database and storage components that comes with it, firewalls, and, and a lot more. Uh, so today we're going to use Skycap to build the images from my code and then use Maestro to deploy it to production on my own servers. So let's get started and click on Skycap. So the concept of a stack is everything I need to run my application. I'm going to give it the name. And then here I can choose where the source for my service come from, comes from. Here I can add more and more services. Um, but let's, for today, we're going to keep it um, only to limited to one service. Uh, where the source for that service comes from, it could be my GitHub repository. Um, if I have connected my Cloud66 to GitHub, then I can see the list of all the GitHub repositories that we have. Or it could be just native Git, uh, regardless of where um, my Git repository is, GitHub or otherwise, we can use it here. Or if I have already built my images somewhere, for example, I have a CI CD pipeline that I can use, and this is only for deployment, so this part gets into Maestro. This is not about Skycap anymore. This is about deployment. But it could well be that I have multiple, ser multiple services in my um, in my application and some of them are built from the code and some of them are just public images like my SQL image for example is something that I want to use. So it could be a private or public Docker repository that I just get for this service. Uh, today I'm just going to get this um, source code from a Git repository um, and I'll get the um, URL for it. So the URL for this is a public um, open source sample code that we have on GitHub and I'm going to use master branch. So we're going to do a bit of uh, analysis on this code. Everything's good. Let's build it. So here, what's happening is Skycap is going to pull out the code from this repository. It's found that there is a Docker file in the repository as well. It will uh, do the build. I can follow the build logs. OK, so it pulled it out. It's telling me that there is no command, as in a CMD command in Docker file, to run this or in service YAML, which is a file we use to configure the, the application. But that's OK, because at this point, I just want to build the application. Later on, we will add this command. So now that command uh, has run, the, the build is run, and the image is ready. It's being pushed into Cloud 6 private registry, and it's available. So the build was successful. And we have an image now. Now I can go to my Cloud66 private Docker repository and pull down this uh, image on my laptop and play around with it and run it locally if I want to. But today I want to deploy it to production. Now before we can do that, as you remember, there was this part that I had to do, and that is adding the command. What command do we want to run, or do we want Docker or containers to run for this application to come up? Um, the, the easiest way for me to do this right now is to go to edit and edit service YAML. So service YAML is a file, is a YAML file very similar to Docker Compose, if you're familiar with that, that tells the system what to do with the service. So, so far what we see here is a very much um, build, build and skycap centric commands where to get the, um, the source code from, uh, what branch is it in, what's the file, a Docker file. And these are the things that are automatically populated, as you saw, uh, using the, the, the web-based interface. Now here, I just want to add command. And then I would like to add the, the command here as well. So my command was, um, is a, my service is built by using a 
Go application. So I just start that Go. And this is where it is. Um, I'm just going to start it. Now, this looks like a commit into a Git, and it is a Git repository. So you can actually access this file with Git and edit it in your own uh, favorite Git, um, favorite text editor if you want, or if you don't like web editors. Uh, but that's the easiest way I can just make this change. So I'm going to commit this change. Okay, so now we have the command. And then I'm going to start the deployment. Here I'm going to choose an environment. Production will do. And I'm going to choose the container stack v2, which is backed by Kubernetes. If you don't choose this, it will happen exactly the same way, but it's not backed by Kubernetes. It's, it's another scheduler that is used to, to, to deploy it. So here I can choose where to deploy my app. Now, these cloud providers are some of the ones that we support. We also support bring your own server. So if you want to deploy to a bare metal or a server that's not part of any of these clouds, clouds that we have. Um, and these are my accounts. So if I choose DigitalOcean, it will deploy it on a new server that it will fire up under my own DigitalOcean account where I can see um, by logging into DigitalOcean dashboard. Um, I'm going to choose London. Uh, here I can choose the size of the server based on the available sizes from DigitalOcean in London. And then here I can uh, um, um, select the networking attributes of this service. So my service serves the traffic on 8050, port 8050, and this is available internally. But in order for me to be able to see it um, from outside, I can, I can enter a port here. And, and here, as you can see, I can, I can go further and say I want HTTP 80, HTTPS 443. And what happens here is that the, the traffic to my uh, service will be, um, will be redirected from ports 80 and 443 to port 8050. Uh, but here when, with HTTPS, essentially another thing that happens is SSL termination. So SSL termination will happen at the Nginx level that's deployed to the node. So your traffic will be encrypted all the way to the to the server, and from the server nginx um, to the the container itself, it will then go to port 8050. Today, I'm going to just keep it simple and to port 80. I think it should be good. Okay. So now you can see that the service is connected to the internet. Um, I can. Get some hints and here i can add more services like databases and other thing other things and these databases for example that i can add to this service are native they're not running in containers and all of it managed by cloud 66 but today we're not going to install any any databases i can also add new servers if i want to but again in the interest of simplicity we're just going to proceed with this setup So what's happening now is Cloud 66 is going to connect to my DigitalOcean account, fire up a 8 gigabyte 4 core CPU for me, provision it, update it, update the kernel if there is a need for it, uh, reboot it if there is a need for it, um, secure it with firewalls, IP table changes, um, install open source monitoring agents on it, um, do a lot of configurations around it, install Nginx and uh, make sure everything is configured correctly to serve my application. It will configure the firewalls based on the requirements of my application given the port that I um, described there. And also install Kubernetes, configure it, secure it. And then after that, it will deploy my application. All of this will take about between 15 to 20 minutes depending on um, how quickly we can gain access to, to a new server that's accessible on the cloud. But average, I would say the first server is about 15 minutes. So let's just wait and see um, the application work. Okay, now most of the deployment parts are done. Um, I think we started about 10 minutes ago. That included um, preparation for the server, um, building the Nginx and other infrastructure parts on the server, and taking care of Docker image credentials, um, anything that was on the server. Obviously, this is a new server, so this part doesn't apply, and starting the services. So now I have one service running here. Um, <clears throat> that's uh, That was my service that, uh, that it started. Uh, there's just a few things that the um, system is trying to finish out, uh, but uh, this is a real service that we are we're running now. I'm just going to wait another uh, minute or so um, to see 
um, the stack finish and then after that we can we can um, go through the next step all right so now the service should be deployed I'm going to visit the site And here is the application. So this is a simple application, as I as I said. Um, this is the IP address of my server now. It just basically tells me what's the Docker container, or in this case, the Kubernetes pod name. Um, the name of the server that's running this pod is running on. The IP address is for uh, for the for the container itself. Uh, the caller itself, which is in this case the the server, uh, because I'm calling uh, from outside onto the server and nginx is sitting on the server so nginx is calling onto the container which means the ip address of the caller and the ip address of the server itself are identical and, and a bunch of other useful uh, information here so i can just uh, refresh this obviously this is a single container application and and and, and here is uh, here is it it is being being shown uh, now let's see if i can scale this so here what we're doing is we're trying to scale um, the the service itself. Um, so I'm just going to scale it up to say four more, which is a total of five. And these are each each one is an individual container containing my app that essentially increases my bandwidth uh, to run um, to 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 cater to take care of more visitors. Okay, now I have five containers running, and if I again try to see the website, I think we can look here at the name of the container itself. We will notice a change every time we, we refresh the page. As you can see, sometimes I hit a different container, so that just basically shows that we have um, different, different containers now running on this. So that's basically uh, what's running on the server. Let's go into the service itself. Right, so these are my services. Each one of those um, five is listed here. They have individual IP addresses. Uh, now I can click on one of them and try to shell into the container just in case I want to debug um, something. Okay, so now I'm inside of the container. Um, I can see my app which is uh, this one um, and if you're familiar with Kubernetes you will see that there is a file called Kubernetes pilot here and I can have a look at this and this is essentially a Kubernetes file uh, to describe this application um, just in case if you want to debug the app It's a very simple Docker file that I have in the repository. I can come out of the container itself, um, and this was basically the simplest way to fire up a Kubernetes backstack on DigitalOcean or any other cloud provider uh, using Cloud66.